give away all the all the beans here. So I'm just going to stick with. I gotta start over. Yes. Neat. All right. Good. <laughs> all right. Good morning, B sides DFW. I'm John Robertson. I'm your track two nine o'clock speaker. We are here in the greater metro Dallas area, and I'm going to be talking about Linux security this morning. I'm going to back up. Uh, we, you know what? We got to do that. Let's go back here because I apparently was doing a mime impression and it didn't work out so well. So, this is Linux between a rock and a hard place dealing with security audits. Uh, this is my own opinion. These are just some guy who has worked on some Linux boxes here and there and is going to be uh, sharing with you some of, some of what I have learned. And these are not necessarily technical controls or some administrative controls or some other things that I want to talk about. Uh, more specifically, why this talk? Uh, I love a good Linux security talk. These are just something that's really near and dear to my heart. A bunch of years ago, I was uh, involved in you know, being somebody's lunch. I hadn't uh, taken care of my security like I should have, and I got got hacked. And I think a lot of us in this business have probably been hacked, and it's like, yeah, that's not cool. We're not doing that again. So I get into this business, and it's a really, it's just very important to me. It's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, so. Additionally, when you are in charge of Linux security, securing a system to the point where it'll pass an audit, and by passing an audit, I mean whatever entity is certifying you, saying you're good, saying you can be on the network, or just generally your own peace of mind, being able to sleep at night. That's uh, where I'm trying to get us today. And these aren't always necessary technical controls. Some of these are administrative. Some of these are just, again, your own peace of mind and things are going to help you be a better security guy. Uh, also, this is going to help you better understand your vulnerabilities and how they are fixed. And uh, the Linux and Linux-like things are becoming more and more common. I know Microsoft is, with their newest version, they're doing some Linux things. Uh, I see different <laughs> Linux boxes. I get phone calls on occasion, hey, I got this weird appliance and it's broken, can you help? And you crack under the Crack open the hood and voila, there's a Linux operating system staring back at you. Uh, this is awesome. Linux has all kinds of neat features, so every day is Halloween with Linux. All right, moving on. Here we go. Uh, here's some resources. I'm going to pause for a second. These are not real great for the online, but uh, this, my contact info is at the end of the slide, and if you want, end of the deck, and if you want to. Uh, Reach out to me, I'll gladly share some of these. Uh, these are mainly vulnerability finding, help you figure out how to manage your vulnerabilities. Uh, OpenSCAP, if you're not familiar with that, it's an awesome project for Linux. Uh, I think they're getting into the IoT business as well, and they are, I, I don't think they do a lot of Windows right now, but I think they're getting there. The uh, Stig viewers, Unified Compliance Hub, the CIS, CIS Security, CIS security guys, uh, those are kind of eh, not anonymous access, and some of them might be paywall, but they're decent resources to look at. I would, if you've not been involved in this field terribly long time, I would really think twice about taking my vulnerability list and handing it to somebody. Uh, more resources, uh, kind of foot stomp a few of these things here, and really celebrate my ability to put black backgrounds with blue fonts. Again, the slides will be available later if you want to partake of that. Uh, Usenix, that is a older organization that does, they cover all the, what's the Unix and the Linux variants. Uh, they're really, if you want to really want to get deep into this field, Usenix guys and girls are hard to get involved with. Uh, SSH security, can't put some this one enough. There's a lot of that out there, and I've seen a lot of folks try to do the Google admin thing on it. Uh, you, you, and it needs, that subject is deep enough where you're going to want to really do the research into it. And then some notes on using partitions. Again, this point, I've seen a lot of folks who, hey, I'm just going to throw up a box real quick, 
and we all know what happens when you throw up something real quick to demo something, it becomes dev, it becomes test, it becomes staging, poof. We got a weird box in production and it has no partitions in it. So bad things can happen. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, bottom line up front, if you are in the beginnings or you're kind of dabbling that way or you're one of the, uh, this is your other di duties as assigned, uh, good system admin work is a basis for, gr basis for great information security work. A lot of things you would do as a Linux admin, if you do them well, like you should, or you, you are, have the opportunity to do them well, I should say that, that will help the IA guys out, the IS guys out later, and hopefully slow down the hacking types so just a little bit. I'm not sure what kind of internal program you have for developing your security, developing your boxes, developing your mindset. Uh, virtual, but virtual test beds are a really awesome place to start. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I can't, uh, a little foggy this morning, I can't, so I can't do my old man voice, but back in my day, we'd go to the, to the bridge over on 9th Street, we'd buy our servers and expired hardware out from under the, the, the deal. It was uh, first Friday sale, and unfortunately, a lot of that's gone away, but it's still kind of a relevant thing. Virtual bed is a better way to go, though. So there's a whole other talk if you want to get into figuring out how to make your laptop good for doing virtual test beds, softwares, I mean, hardware, some good things and some not so good things. And we get to probably the one statement that's going to help, and it's a little narrower than I'd like. I mean, buy me schools, buy me books, send me to school, and I still can't edit my slides. Understanding where the areas where you need to harden, I'm going to broaden that a little bit. Know what's going on with your stuff. That's why you're developing these things. That's why you're going through your checklist manually. That's why you're developing these things manually so you know what's going on. Probably one of the wisest things anyone's ever said to me in the security business and the admin business is know what's going on and be able to explain it. That piece of advice, advice right there, I've seen people make careers just on that one piece of advice. And that is where I will continue. So we'll go on. Uh, tools, there are a number of tools you can use in this field. I have often marveled when I was first getting into it, how do these guys know these tools? How do they know where to find this, that, or the other thing? Well, Twitter, uh, other admins dealing with user groups. That's how you learn a lot of these. And these are some of the tools that I use off and on, and a couple I want to foot stomp here. Uh, script, we've had that. Oh, I've seen on various platforms. I think the Rocky OS guys have it. I think the uh, Solaris guys might have it, and there's a couple other platforms that have it. Basically, this not only captures, it says bash history, but then some. It captures what you're typing in, and then it types out the response. It captures a response. You're basically getting a recording session. Uh, Really awesome tool to use, and you can also use that to kind of develop your own remediation scripts if you choose to do that. Uh, this one I kind of lightly recommend Excel slash numbers if you're in the Mac world. Great for tracking things, great for doing quick lists and sorts and things of that nature. Uh, death, you've heard of death by PowerPoint? Well, its cousin is death by spreadsheet, and it's a very real thing. So it's a tool, you can use it. I've done some great things with it, uh, but be wary. Uh, really, if once you get too far down the road with this, you want to get into a database light tool, something uh, Obsidian, some other lightweight database you can put on a laptop, keep with you, track things. Uh, it's going to be a lot faster and a lot easier for you producing reports and getting results out of those. Uh, I, did, I don't have a good database recommended because there are a number of them out there. and. It's, it's like religion. I'm not going to tell you what's the best out there. Uh, OpenSCAP, we've talked about that. Uh, there's, you don't want to be running all your checks alone. This will go out and do scanning for you. Uh, OpenSCAP.org, great resource, something that's got a bit of a learning curve to it, frankly. There are profiles. There are what do you want to put into it? How strict do you want to be? How far ch checks do you want to do? OpenSCAP is one of the tools you can use. There are other tools out there that, again, your mileage may vary <coughs> using those. 
a couple of a couple of others here I want to foot stop for a minute. Putty, if you're using it, it's an awesome tool. It is a great tool. Uh, back in the six, eight, six, nine days, I think is when they added the serial component. Very useful. In the seven, seven, one days, they started doing uh, whatever kind of memory cards that you use for identification. Again, that's very useful. Very good information out there. But please, 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 for the love of all that is holy, when you bring putty in, have a good program for it. Uh, some of the areas I've done some consulting things in, putty was that dirty little secret that, oh, we have this really neat tool and it does some things. And guess what? That's awesome that you're able to get in. You're do, able to do this thing real quick. Or you know, one of the appliance guys needed a tool real quick just to get in and do a console. Well, it sits out there on the network and somebody will find it two and a half years later. Hey, I found this really neat tool. So guess what? Uh, I've, I think it was Putty six, late 6.9, six, early 7.0. We had some really na nasty vulnerability. And some, I mean, literally the entire internet just had, it's like, okay, everybody stop. Go web dev your putties, delete your old ones, do that. There's still old putties out there and they're still problematic. And please just have an agreement with whoever does your software or whoever, you know, if it's that, if this is your own personal stuff. Update your putty on occasion, please. Don't leave the old versions out there. Uh, it, it very, very analogous to the Christmas computers. Hey, everybody got a Christmas computer for Christmas. Hey, I put it on the internet. And nobody thought to patch it. And well, <laughs> it is literally Christmas for you. And it's Christmas for <laughs> other folks. Uh, uh, the, the, so update your stuff. Regular expressions, <sighs> yes, they're hard. Yes, they can be difficult. It can be very trying. And it is, it's one of those that you just need to do it, okay? Read, I've got a couple of books, recommendations, and that's, on, that's one of the books I carry around. That is a good recommendation. Please just get into regex. I know of so many folks who have, uh, it's portable. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, it's absolutely portable. It goes from Perl, it goes Python, it goes, I, I'm sorry, can we, we can stick that in Excel, can't we? That's awesome. Is there anything you can't do with regex? Just an awesome tool that you just, again, buy the book, start reading it. It's good. Uh, these next two guys, Screen and Tmux, they are kind of cousins to script. Screen is a really awesome tool. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, I'm typing along, I'm doing something, and all of a sudden my session goes away. I'm doing remote stuff and it goes away. Well, Screen kind of helps you with that. You can go, if you've started it correctly, you can go back and rejoin your session and go right back to typing. Or if you had a long script running, that script should hopefully not notice when your session drops. You go back and rejoin the session, life goes on. Uh, that is not 100% guaranteed. Again, <laughs> reminder, this is my opinion, my views, so your mileage will definitely vary. <laughs> definitely, definitely your mileage will vary. Now, there's a new guy in town. And uh, he's at least a year, if not two years old. I first caught my attention about two years ago. Uh, saw some talks on talks on Tmux, how you can divide up screens, you can do all kinds of neat things with them. And yeah, that's a f some distributions have decided that's going to be a mainstay. If you want Bash on this system, you're getting Tmux, and uh, that's awesome. If you're an OS guy and you're used to it and you know what's going on. It's not so awesome if you're a scanner or you're another guy who still thinks uh, the uh, two X kernels are just all that. <laughs> I know you need to, you need to, you know, three X for it. You know, getting into the older guys, that's the newer guys, excuse me, that's awesome. TMX is something, again, it's not as bad a learning curve, but it is something you need to read the man pages. Uh, I am so sorry. I don't have my. Uh, I don't have my uh, uh, really neat slide for. Uh, neat slide. Neat meme for this. If uh, there are two books on my bookshelf, one is the Tmux man page, and the other is the Kern and Ritchie's uh, C manual. Okay, moving on. There we go. We didn't jump out. Okay, so those are tools. Again, your mileage will definitely vary. Uh, chat, if you want to talk, chat up tools, that's an awesome thing. Uh, successful also starts with a great install. 
a couple of things when you get ready for install time. First of all, know your audience. What are you going to do with this box? If you're going to go do some big application, do they live in slash op? Do they live in user? Do they live on their own partition? Those are things you're going to need to kind of know. Also, your logging. Your logging is going to be very important. Uh, I cannot put stop that enough. Logs, huh? Yes, definitely. You want you want you want to be tracking it. You want to be in your logs, and you want to get the logs off the box. Yeah, come on, leave your black box. Just somehow we got to have that. Absolutely, you put it anywhere else. Outside the box. Exactly. Once you get the box. Uh huh. Get it off the box as quick as possible. Hourly, daily, you know, at, at gosh, uh, hourly if possible. I've had things that were great at 8 to 8 a.m. and come midnight, they are dead. And I'd really like to know what happened because I got a thousand more of them just like it. And uh, I, yeah, I've done that bad Thanksgiving trip. Thank you. No, never want to do that again. Uh, so now that your audience, uh, partition is important, minimal installation, please, for love of all, oh, it is holy. Don't do the, ah, oh, just install everything. Yes, you've got the disk. Just, what's the, you know, just because you have the disk, just because you have the memory, doesn't mean you should use it all right now. You know, use that for later for your logging or team accessions or whatever you need to be doing with that. Minimal installations and then know how to add on stuff later. Okay? Uh, yes, God, lo love, love those packages, love those install groups. Those are awesome. Now, one thing that, you do have to really get involved with what you're doing on your OS. You really need to know that. Once you do this often enough, you will develop a, hey, I don't have to have it all, but I know I need extra libs for this. I know I need, you know, my X11. I don't need a full-blown graphical install. I just need enough to spit out an X window on occasion. Uh, you will have to know how the, all that's going to work. What's your mapping? No, again, know thy audience. Uh, talk to the backup folks. Oh, goodness. So especially in the case that you're doing like a brand new release. Hey, uh, Rocky OS 9 is out. We're going to go do it. That's awesome. We're going to go build some test, test boxes. Have a conversation with your backup guys because their bonuses, their continued employment is probably based on your boss's uh, performance indicators as well is based on being able to back up your box and restore it when a boo-boo happens. And a boo-boo will happen. So if you get one of those brand new boxes and I say, hey, I'm brand new. I've got to have brand new ButterFS. I've got to go brand new EXT9. <laughs> That's awesome. But if your backup guys can't understand it and it's not guaranteed they will, yeah, guess what? We can't restore. Life, life is not fun at that point. Uh, there are ways that your backup vendors can get around it, and yeah, but you don't want to be doing that at Sunday morning at 2 o'clock in the morning, and my prod whatever box is down, and I've got, you know, Event Horizon's coming, guys. we got to get this going, and yeah. Talk to your backup folks. Uh, one of the later slides I want to talk about, you know, taking care of the personnel. Backup folks are one people that you definitely want to be buying the drinks for and buying lunch. They are critical to your success. They show up on your audits. They show up on all your stuff. Uh, keep these folks near and dear to your heart. If you want to, uh, it's great job security if you do work in the backup area. God love you. It, there's a pretty quick exit, though. <laughs> you lose enough data or you lose data, that's a problem. Uh, finally, get an OS for which you can purchase support. Uh, this is predominantly, again, goes to the mindset of how you're securing your stuff, how your auditing needs to work. I I've seen a lot of shops. We don't want to buy support for our dev and our test and our stage. We just want to buy it for prod, which if you're cutting something and you're down, <laughs> you're way, way down the list, that I would see that it's reasonable. Uh, you have you got to practice the way you play, though, folks. I'd at least keep my test or my stage or something like that. Yeah, keep spend a little bit of money there. Uh, I know Red Hat's got a new program out. What was that? March, April. They did a new program. Yeah. 
So be doing that sort of thing. And the trick is, I want to go figure out that team that's problem in stage or test somewhere other than prod. Again, Sunday morning at 2 a.m., I prefer to be asleep, not working on something. Uh, Monday morning at 8 a.m., I don't like the brick wall that I don't know is coming. I, don't, I cringe when I walk into my office. Uh, get an OS where you can buy support, because this leads to some other really good things. Uh, so we're going to divert slightly, go over to partitions, not spend too long here. Uh, break out your partitions, please. I've seen, I don't know how many folks that say, hey, I'm just going to do a, one big glob, and we're going to send it on its happy little way. It's, yeah, just swallow it all. In a few cases, that's okay. If I'm doing some micro install on a Raspberry Pi, Raspbian, whatever, okay, maybe. But by and large, if you're doing something that you're going to care and feed for for a long time, you need to break out your partitions, especially your logs. Partition, partition yeah, definitely your partitions. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, you must be a you must be a DBA, sir. Just, just all, oh, that's, that's all good. Uh, yeah, don't put all your stuff on one deal. Uh, the particular gotcha is slash boot. I have seen, I don't know how many installs that they didn't put reasonable stuff on slash boot. They, they, back in the day, I think CentOS was doing like half a gigabyte. Kernels aren't big. That's fine. We'll just use a little space here. Uh, again, know thy audience. If I'm in a situation where I've got to be, have multiple kernels available to me for boot time, yeah, that's going to bite. Uh, in the day and age of you know terabytes on your Linux systems, come on. A <laughs> couple of gigabytes for the couple of gigabytes for the boot partition is not unreasonable. Just let him have what he needs to have. Okay. <laughs> Uh, why we fill it up, we crash it, life gets very unpleasant. Uh, virtual environment concerns. So here's the neat trick. Uh, in the hardware day age, let's say the hardware age, we were concerned about, okay, I got these disks, I need to glue them together with RAID 5s, I need to do all these other different things. Well, these days we're doing cloud, we're doing things like uh, home NASs, home raids, uh, uh, free NAS, I'm doing like that. So a lot of that is taken care of somewhere else. So on the OS level, I don't worry as much about that. Uh, you do need to be mindful, though, when I'm putting a system together. Do I want to have just a couple of partition slices? I'm going to call this disk. Do I? How do I want to do that up for the level? <laughs> I, I I would not do more than a couple. A disk, or what we're going to call disk, virtual disk in this area. Uh, maybe one for the, what I call the head. Uh, I'm going to put, say, my boot, my kernel, this stuff. I'm going to take opt, bar, and some other guys put them somewhere else. And I'm going to take the whatever application this thing is, I'm going to take him and stick him somewhere else. Maybe on separate disk. Uh, the awesome part about that is when you have to go, like you got to leave a system. And it's time to copy. The, you know, you, you park the park your VM environment. I've got to take all my system, my system components somewhere else. So I'm going to copy these three big files that represent my three big drives. Well, that's awesome. But if I got one big system, I'm going to be or one big drive, I'm going to be sitting there waiting, waiting. But if I can take the application partition and just send him somewhere else and marry him up to another, and I suppose I've got another box and I've got another head. What I'll call a head, and it's where my slash boot my opt my user all those guys are parked somewhere else or I've got another copy of them I can marry those up to that other guy and I'm good to go you're not sitting there waiting the point is if you want to have grand, one great big thing one great big box um, you will it'll take it may take you a while to get out get out of the environment if you're trying to get out in a hurry and that can be a problem uh, mount options this is another situation where you are very concerned about mount options because, okay, I, if I've got, say, no exec, you know, there's half a dozen. You know, yeah, mount, you got a FS, you got a bunch of those things that you're worried about, and somebody in your application just feels like he should be able to exec his stuff out of slash temp. 
well, yeah, no, we don't allow that. And uh, then when his boss and your boss finish their conversation at lunch, yeah, you can go ahead and yeah, no uh, remount is an awesome option. Uh, just be mindful of those are a control. Those are things you need to be mindful of. And again, know, know what's going on with your stuff. I, I will tell you, I've, I've spent a lot of time troubleshooting a no exec set in a slash temp or var, var temp option. I've spent a lot of time troubleshooting that. Uh, and it, I wasn't alone because I and my application counterparts have no problem engaging our vendor. I mentioned buying the support. Uh, this is part of why you buy that support. Uh, first of all, you should have no problems talking to that vendor. Even if you just go to Red Hat and buy the $335 option that still gives you rights to email them, I would try and talk them into a phone call. I think you get, what, eight to five support on the no cost thing. You, it will always talk to you on the phone. Don't have a problem talking to the vendor. They can do a lot of things for you. I will also tell you, I have taken control issues. I can take uh, uh, controls, I mean, uh, vulnerability controls. I have emailed them descriptions, snippets, all kinds of weird stuff. It's like, hey, this control doesn't match in your OS. What do we do about it? <laughs> Usually I get a, oh, so tier, tier one uh, will typically hand you off to the security team. Hopefully those guys have seen it before and they, they can help you get around a problem quickly. At a minimum, if I'm staring down an inspector and I say, hey, you're right, I got a high level of vulnerability. I've got a, it's what is it, low, medium, high, and whatever the other one is, uh, extremely bad, extremely bad vulnerability here. But here's my email trail. I've talked to the vendor on this, and this is a problem nationwide, worldwide, whatever wide, you know, system wide. If I'm showing the auditor that I've been talking to this vendor, that's, that's going to be some points in your favor. It's like, hey, they're trying to fix it. They know it's an issue. There's been progress, absolutely. You know, you show your IAIS team, hey, we're working with the vendor. Uh, one of the sites I worked in, you did not leave on a certain level of box. If this was considered like primary, you didn't leave unless you had a ticket number. I mean, that's part of my, what's part of my checking out of the building. It's like, okay, uh, yeah, I'm so-and-so, I've got this son of system down, and oh, here's the, the ticket with Canonical. Here's the, uh, the other folks over at BMC have given me these ticket numbers. So this is, this is how we're making progress. We're showing, and you know, they have your phone numbers and get a hold of you if they need to. Uh, that's very important. Uh, also, <sighs> I hesitate on that last line. They're paid to be your friends. That makes them sound really bad. I've, I've worked with a lot of really cool vendors, folks that, and I've even had them say, hey, your support died a month ago. Really can't spend a lot of time on this, but you need to check this note or that note. Uh, be engaging with these folks. And please also, in all fairness to the vendors, please understand that is how they make their living. That's how they do things. And it is important to respect that. Uh, and just have, have an open conversation saying, okay, what do you guys need to do for us to all be cool here? What do you guys need from us to show your boss that you're doing some good things? And that way you keep them engaged. And they can also hook you up with other resources. If you're looking at a problem or you're looking at how to develop a, a system to do something, you can talk to your vendors like, hey, man, I don't need names or stuff like that, but is anybody else doing this? I'm trying to do thing X. Talk with those vendors. Again, this is probably old hat for some of you, but if it's, say, something maybe you haven't done or maybe you don't think you want to do, reconsider that. <laughs> and uh, in doing the lunch and learns, that's uh, another thing that I've benefited from greatly. Uh, one one pat last thought on the tier one guys, I've had them pass me off to folks that ended up being the security writer, like one of the head shed security guys for a company. That was a very cool individual to talk to. And I got to the point I could email him directly saying, hey, this is broken, or we noticed this, or we, you know, hey, we saw this on the news, or better yet, my boss, my boss's boss saw this in his copy of PC Weekly, and he wants to know what's going on. Able to, you're able to explain that, as I mentioned before, know what's going on and be able to explain it.
All right, moving on, software selection. Uh, again, do the minimal install, it lessens your attack surface. Uh, know thy audience, know what, they, what their needs are gonna be. Are we dealing with BMC? Am I dealing with what other, other vendor that's gonna have products on there? Uh, you know, big hint, third party guys don't always know that 777 is a bad thing. And for some people that's an airplane. <laughs> other people just like, yes, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, my, my personal favorite is the, you know, it, it helps us get Christmas faster because, uh, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. Keeping your systems patched up for you secure your systems. Once you get into the software business, you know, you've got the install done, you got the configuration done, then you secure it. Then you go back and patch it, secure it, you know, double check it. Uh, to my horror once, I, I was patching up a big, really big box went through all the patching, got the box, brought back up, it's off serving the customer, and security comes along, they do their thing, and it's like, thought you were working on databases. Well, I am. Why the hell are you running Apache? It's like, oh, mother, all that is holy. Uh, yeah, that prompts another conversation with the vendor. It's like, why are we running Apache, guys? Yeah. And that became part of my checklist is like, check for Apache. Why do you have Apache? Or just do a quick search for uh, SSL.com. Where is it? Why is it there? We removed you. Go away. Yeah. But that's daily, daily. Uh, getting your system patched up for your secure system and move fewer lines to, fewer files to scan, configs to check, and that will speed up your SCAP scans. Uh, again, I I've, don't know how many checklists I've been working through. It's like, oh goody, I've got to go secure this graphical environment. But I don't use graphical environment. It is real quick to say, are you using this graphical login? Well, no. See ya. Other times, it's not. You're not so lucky. But by and large, that is a much better thing. All right. SSH security. We're coming up. We are at 9:35 now, and I think you're going to cut me off at what 10 till. Okay, or just whenever. Yeah, I'll, I'll just keep going and uh, we'll get there when we get there. All right, SSH security. This is something, in my opinion, that you should really spend the time on. I mentioned, you know, on your bookshelf, you should have the, what did I tell you, the TMUX man page and uh, Kern and Ritchie's C manual. Well, if you had the third book, this is probably the SSH security. Uh, some. Uh, this is really kind of cool, uh, tattoo, tattoo lawn. You know, I practice that every time and I never get it. <clears throat> I'll just take that off the slide next time. Author and continued researcher. I mean, the gentleman's still out there doing some things. It'd be an awesome to just follow him, see what he's thinking, get on his uh, ssh.org. Believe it's the site he actually owns. And so that is very cool. You wrote it, you own the stuff on it, and you're pretty much everywhere, even though, yeah, even though people don't know it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, a, that's a whole other slide. See, that's, you go start going through this stuff and you, you learn more. Uh, respect the subject. Read, heed, especially the security intel. Uh, yeah, I've been, I don't, again, I don't want to use my own land voice, but I've been dealing with SSH a while, and to this day, I'm still getting new things like, have you considered this? And no, I had not. I, I just assumed I set this flag, and it's like, nope. There's what it wants to do, there's the suggestions you make in the configuration files, and then there's what you tell it not to do. And those are three areas. Uh, where are your keys kept? No, really. <laughs> User.ssh, well, not everybody does that. And that's getting to be kind of a thing. When you talk to new boxes, when you go talk to strangers, uh, they're telling you, hey, this Send me a key, because I, I don't leave it with you. I don't trust you, that, and that's part of your SSH security. I have my own special place I stick that. Only me. Oh, uh, continuing on, there's a lot of awesome stuff in that configuration file. Uh, respect that configuration file. This is one of the ones that will shoot you in the foot, and you don't play anymore if you get this wrong. Terribly wrong. Uh, what port are you listening on? Everybody assumes 22. So does the bad guy. That's not always the answer. I mentioned when you get new creds on a box, I'm starting to see more and more where people are saying, yeah, we're on this port. 
Remember I told you to go have lunch with your network backup, with your backup guys? Have lunch with your network guys too. Make sure they're taken care of because if they don't know you're on 22, thanks, thanks for playing. <laughs> we, uh, we, and there's, there's a whole thing on that. So we can talk that in the, uh, yeah, the next, the next slide in the next on chat. Uh, listening address. So here's one of those nice, what I call ankle biters. Yeah, you, if it says zero, 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 you're listening to everything, and that's awesome. You really want to have your boss's mind blown? Just have your pen tester come in and SSH to your website, and it respond to you. No, at, uh, you know what? <laughs> at a minimum, turn that one off. Make sure you, you know, you may die on other hills, but not on that hill. Uh, syslog, log, whatever info, whatever you feel you need, just don't turn off logging. So many of my problems have been solved being able to look at that. Uh, a lot of what you will see is uh, the permissions are not correct. When you do SSH, you use a strict configuration mode. Yep, that is your friend. I've, yeah, it's one of those you let the juniors bang their head on that one for a while, then you just go do a quick change and on your gust. You're awesome. X forwarding, S11, X. I just, I, there's just not a great X manual out there right now. And again, maybe in the chat, somebody can recommend a, a really good X manual. If you don't need it, turn it off. Do what? Wolverine? Never heard of it. There we go. Ah. Got, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Shifted gear. I didn't shift gears fast enough. Anyways, SSH, that is something you want to care deeply about, and especially X11 because X Windows security. Yeah. One of the. <laughs> no, no, get out. Just no, boo. Uh, we have. Uh, so, no. X Windows, how much do you need? Really, how much do you need? Do you need a graphical login? Do you really? Or do you just need an application that needs to spit out X lock or X eyes or whatever? X, yeah, kudos when you get X bell running. Uh, do you need the whole thing? What? Oh, a portion of it, dude. Do I just need the libs? Just enough to spit out the window or somewhere in between? Know what you can what you're able to do and just appreciate. Again, the previous slide, which I'm not going to go back to, talks about X windows and SSH. Uh, there's nothing quite like having one of your security guys that show you that you turned off X forwarding in your own SSH and that's why your X windows aren't working. Yeah, then your customer gets to the point where they recognize that as well. So just appreciate those who have a relationship and be respectful of it. <sighs> Firewalls. At a minimum, have them turned on and just logging everything that runs through it. Yes, we can go have, go find you a log vendor and they can talk about logging. Yes. Matter of just is that bad on these log files? Uh, at a minimum, turn it on, know what's going on. I have found so many problems that way. Uh, in my opinion, they should be built from scripts, and those should match up to your documentation. Uh, my doc, it's, if with me, it's, it's kind of like everybody hates uh, Matter of because he builds his firewalls with scripts, and which is not that bad, but he also uses that as his documentation. And yeah, I guys, you know, they'll humor you for a while, but after a while, they're like, no, no, I don't think so. And uh, yeah, just there needs to be a relationship there. Really, there does, because later on, after the hack, <laughs> you get to say, hey, we did this or we didn't do that or here's what's going on. Uh, that documentation is super important. Uh, need to include references to any agreement you have. Uh, one customer I worked with, they had literally signed pieces of paper saying we will move your data or we won't do this or that. Uh, references in there because there's nothing quite as fun as figuring out why am I actually moving this data? Hmm, could somebody be exfiltrating some data? Yeah, GDPR, absolutely. Absolutely, and that, that's really important there. Need to match those up with your system diagrams. Again, I'm that really awful guy who does pictures and, uh, because where I came from in school, I do them in crayon and graphing paper. And <laughs> there are others like me. Uh, log file conversations, you have a vendor for that. The, get them off the box as quick as you can. 
uh, you want the black box info as quick as you can get it if a boo-boo happens. Uh, SE Linux, that's another thing. I have two stages on this. SE Linux, that is a security thing that is a getting to a point where if you want to be get a certified box, you will have it turned on and enabled. Uh, watching, knowing how to use those SC Linux tools is super important, and that's something that you run into uh, constantly biting you. Uh, there's the SC Linux project. That's an awesome page. There's a sh two stages here. The short learning curve, you can get it functional, you can get it not killing your stuff, but you always need to be mindful. It's like, hey, I see Linux is out there running. I wonder if that's why that app is acting weird. I wonder if that's why that install won't complete. Be mindful of it, know how to use the tools to look at your SE Linux stuff. Again, that should be part of your, uh, the, whatever log file reviews you do, however you do that. See we under the surface. There are some gotchas, there are some things for it. Yay, 42, my favorite number. Uh, seaweed under the surface, you can really muck up some things. There are some security controls that you do that are, if you do them wrong, that is the great way to exit that box. Uh, again, you'll be talking to your backup guys or you'll just be doing a new install or clone, however that goes. Uh, getting into how you do your security mappings, things of that nature, that is very much a vendor conversation and I really would be talking to those guys on it. And that's why you pay for support. Oh, vulnerability scanners. Scanners, we're getting into religions here. Uh, there are different scanners that do different things for you. Some log into your box and look around. Some of you log into your box and look around and report results back to them. However that needs to work, whatever mechanism is governing you, pay attention to what they're telling you to go do. Uh, OpenSCAP is a great candidate if you don't have anything else to use. Uh, there's a oh, there's a SCAP workbench. Some really awesome tools in here. You do your whatever what you call protection profiles. How locked down does the box need to be? Does it need to breathe? Do I need to track every process that gets started or not? Up to you. However, you need to do that. Whatever level you need to be stuck at. Customization files. If we know we've got to scan every box because I've got to have a report for every box. But I know this class does databases. This does my application X. This doesn't do anything but support. That's awesome. You can do profiles that say, OK, we know we're going to see a lot more world writable files on support boxes because they go deal with other interfaces. So we know we need to be more mindful of that. This database server over here, though, yeah, not so much. guys. Log in, they do their patching, they log back out. I got a bunch of whatever database port you're using running back and forth. So that's what we need to be mindful of. And you don't want to spend all your time looking for uh, graphical login problems if you're totally a command line situation. If there's no X on it, great. There's a bunch of checks I get to skip. Uh, figure out what you're scanning, how are you scanning it. Do you log on to the box and scan it? Does something else log on? You get the picture. OpenSCAP, uh, kind of getting to the parting thought there. Uh, what kind of reports do you need out? Uh, I have seen and used both the XML and the HTML, and just be sure to save your copies because, yeah, that's that's part of my that's part of my uh, how I get my bonuses. Is hey, look, we started out really dirty. You had a thousand of these things. We got halfway through, and you, yeah, look, you're down to 750 and you're moving the right direction. But then you come back the next day. There's, unfortunately, you get into politics in that sort of situation and it kind of bites. And these are just things you need to be able to sh document your work, is all I'm saying. Again, know what's going on, be able to explain it. <sighs> all right, this is probably the, the best slide in here. Because, so we've talked a lot of technical stuff, partitions, scanners, configurations, all that other good stuff. You need to get to a point where you take care of the nut behind the wheel, taking care of you. There are a lot of areas where you need to be concerned about. 
uh, Linux boxes are 24 by 7 by 365, and there can be a lot of them, and they can have lots of problems, and you can have lots of pressures, because somebody's spending a lot of money to take care of this one box, and it does this one function, and you have one customer, for whatever reason, his profiles never work out right, his patch profile is completely wrong every time he logs in, he doesn't understand it, his, he doesn't like that flavor of SSH client, whatever. Burnout is a very real thing and it can really be a problem. I have, I, I, to be honest with you, I really haven't done a case study on where these, where folks burn out, where they die off. Uh, I really haven't, don't know that, but you need to know you. Again, know what's going on and be able to explain it. Are you burned out? Have you worked an 80 hour a week? Have you, have you been doing that week in, week out? Uh, are the vulnerabilities killing you? How, what's going on there? Because as much as a problem as it is for you to be gone for an afternoon or a day or a week, it's much worse when you're gone all together as in you go find another job. That really doesn't help those on the job site and it doesn't help you. Eventually, it's all about you're being able to take care of yourself and that way you can contribute to your team and to the field that you're working in. Uh, so. Please take care of you. Take time. If if you don't feel good, if, if things aren't going right, you know, please have those relationships. I mentioned going out to lunch with your network and your backup guys. No, really, do go to lunch with these people, and that way you can lean on each other. It's this day and age. It's really important to be able to do that, especially in the age when we're all working, you know, far away from each other. You need to be able to lean on each other, be able to call somebody up. I, I'm super fortunate, I can talk to my management. It's like, hey, I'm not feeling right, Th things just aren't going well, and we can work through some things. Uh, we're coming up, and the man with the clock has just come back, and he's doing, he's, so he's doing the root, I, I'm gonna guess that's a root dance he's doing. That's awesome. And see, he's taking care of himself. He's not, he's avoiding burnout, because it's the beginning of the day, and he's got a long day in front of him. I know. All right, so quickly, education and certifications. Uh, if your boss will pay for certifications or education, you need to be, please take advantage of that. Those don't always come along and it will help you later on. It, yeah, if you got, yeah, however, however that works for you, uh, and I'll see that is, uh, that should be part of your conversation when you're applying for a job, when you're looking at going to work for a place. What do you guys do on education and certifications? And uh, for whom do you want to work? You do this long enough and someone will come to you and say, you know what, you're doing an awesome job, you're managing everything, you're organizing, you're a great organizer, we'd like to make you the lead, or we'd like to make you the boss. For some people that is a no way, never, I, I ain't gonna do it conversation. Just consider one thing, for whom do you want to work? The guy who's gonna get the job, if you don't take it, yeah. Uh, my, my MO has always been, yes, I will take the lead, I will be the boss, but I'm always gonna have the captain's yacht available to me. If I, I, I want my logins on the box, I will take patch, patch night responsibilities, that's you know one month, one quarter, whatever. Yeah, just keep that in mind. Read only Fridays, you can thank a guy named Peter Coffey, and he actually did come from PC Weekly. I think he's long since retired. He was a columnist for a bunch of years ago. Uh, and it's not necessarily Friday, but it is whatever last day you are working. Please don't go in and decide you're going to go patch up a box. Or please decide, you know, hey, we need to update USB drivers in the kernel. Oh, it'll just be a quick reboot. No problem at all. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. I will, I'm going to steal that from you. Uh, it is... Read only Friday, and it's really funny that it's spreading through my entire office. And everybody except for one individual, the guy who signed my paychecks, decided that that was a, probably an awesome idea. And yeah, if we go out, it's because management needs us to go out on something. Uh, be mindful of this. And also keep in mind who you take with you. So if you go patch a kernel and you blow it, you're going to be talking to backups. Chances are pretty good if you're reloading a kernel, unless you're just that magic and you're working on a node cluster, you're taking databases or application team with you. And if you're in a big enough organization, you're taking CM and QA and all those other guys with you. Um, you're taking customer, remote customer chats. You're doing all those guys with you. So when you blow it on a Friday, 
a lot of people are going with you and you're going to be buying a lot of drinks. So whatever the last working day is, be mindful of that. And yeah, uh, taking care of yourself. I also want to do a pitch out here. Uh, being able to explain things, kind of the theme here, being able to explain things and know what's going on. A uh, great organization called Toastmasters that's helped me be able to explain technical things to non-technical folks or to bring it down a level so that other people understand it. Great organization, and, and that's part of the reason I'm able to come here and do these talks. Uh, quickly, we're going to go off remediation because I'm over and they're not throwing things at me yet. Uh, SCAP. SCAP generates uh, remediation scripts, if you so choose, or you can go out and get your own remediations going on. Uh, Ansible does remediations for you. There are custom scripts out at GitHub, vendor-related scripts and processes, or you can go roll your own. Python, anyone. <coughs> uh, books, paper or electronic. There are certain books that I do in paper. Uh, anything with Python and hackers in it is usually actually a pretty good book. Uh, the Art of War. What business are you in? You have to have that if you're going to be in this business. A Bash reference, Electronics Fine on that. But the classic shell scripting book, and I did not list the uh, Regex book. Those are two paper copies. Regex, Regex 101. Excellent site, sir. Uh, those are good things that uh, books that I have, I carry them around with me. I, I've got a stack of books that I take with me. Uh, another, a couple other good books, uh, Deep Work, that's the Cal Newson, and I may have misspelled that last name. Great read, talking about how you organize, organize your day to be more effective and how to really get good things done. And he's got some really good warnings in the book. Uh, this day and age, a lot of people don't have a long attention span. I'm surprised I'm able to stand. You can, I'm sitting here fidgeting around. So, uh, being able to focus for deep, focus on long range things is very important. And that work, that book talks about it. Atomic Habits, making very minor incremental changes. Again, great for scripting, great for learning regex. Uh, and those other books are very good. Parting thoughts, uh, securing your box is not necessarily a hurry up last minute process. If you got to hurry up and remediate a box, please don't. <laughs> please don't because you're, yeah, unless you're just that good. And this subject, can the will, you buy me books, send me school, and I set up slides like that. Uh, this, this can be a pretty deep subject. Uh, hurry up is just, well, just hurry up as best you can. Uh, lack of planning on your, your end and make an emergency on my end. Uh, in the last slide, uh, you saw several cat videos. There's, there's cat commands, there's man commands. There are no dog commands. Uh, one time I actually did have a dog command. I had some custom script on my own. Uh, that's who I am. Reach out to me. I'll be on Discord for a while. Uh, yum. Yellow. Yeah, that, that's kind of. Yum. Yellow dog modifier. Yellow, yeah, anyways, however that works out. So uh, thank you very much. That's it's it for me. That's 55 minutes worth of goodness. Uh, I think they got this on tape. And that's how you find me on Twitter. Uh, reach out to me. Love to hear folks. Love to hear feedback on this. Uh, it stunk is, is a good introduction line, but tell me why it stunk. Uh, always looking to improve these things. So with that, I'm done. I don't know. I'm it.